Great to be here. How is everybody? Fantastic school. I'm going to actually come to your school and uh, study again. Because education is the mother of all luck, as you all know. So I'm going to uh, have a graduate degree. But I heard uh, graduate degrees are going to be a little bit more expensive. Um, glad to be here. My favorite conference. I'm not just saying this. Uh, uh, MR knows this. Um, I, had a, like a long trip, literally uh, traveling around the world with our team, Mitnick Center, over the past three weeks, and we're still on the road for the next three weeks. We had to adjust our calendars for NASCOM to make sure that we're here. Literally arrived last night, 2 a.m. this morning, and we have to fly out uh, tomorrow uh, uh, to uh, um, uh, overseas to Brazil for another big event and a customer meeting. Just wanted to make sure that we just stop over from China to, uh, but uh, uh, the reason I'm sharing this with you is because the passion we have for India uh, um, as the cradle of innovation, but more importantly, for NASCOM, for this special event. And thank you for being part of this. So um, when I was talking to MR and the sponsors, they uh, uh, suggested we have a conversation about a billion dollar company. And I asked, why a billion? Why don't we have a $100 billion company? Uh, why do we stop at billion? Um, but those dollar amounts are all, at the end of the day, uh, you know, uh, uh, scorecards that we create for ourselves. Um, I think uh, uh, there's a bigger story, a bigger uh, uh, message uh, uh, in that number. Um, so I just wanted to share with you a little bit of context, because I'm sure there are a few people here who were in the NASCOM event we did last year. Uh, but some may be brand new. And I'm hearing there's a record attendance this year. Um, just want to give you a little bit of context about uh, what I do, what we do as a company. Um, Nexenta is basically a software-defined storage company. We are software-only approach, uh, completely differentiated from the old-school hardware-based storage businesses, uh, uh, which have been very successful over the past uh, uh, three decades, uh, selling high-margin hardware systems to store data. And this same revolution took place in servers and what VMware did uh, 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 with virtualization. And now we saw that with networking and infrastructure and unnetworking with software-defined networking. But uh, uh, storage has been still in this, what I call uh, a, a, a non-democratic system, market ecosystem, in which few companies basically rule everything. Uh, you know, reminds you a little bit of Russia or uh, some of the Middle Eastern countries. So Arab Spring arrived in the Middle East, at least tried to arrive, but in storage industry, Arab Spring still didn't arrive. Um, it's still the mafia network uh, managing and controlling 90% of the market. So as entrepreneurs, when we looked at the marketplace and we said, there is a disruption opportunity. So uh, basically, Nexenta is leading that effort with an open source model. And I'm going to tie this in, in, a, in a few moments, what, I, what we mean about the $100 billion opportunity, not a billion dollar opportunity. So as you look at the markets and, and ecosystems, as entrepreneurs, investors, CEOs, executives, employees, doesn't matter what your function is, you're looking for differentiation opportunity in terms of market segment from a product perspective, from a customer need perspective, also from a channel's perspective to make that a big deal uh, uh, in an efficient way from a go-to-market perspective. So in all those dimensions, then uh, 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 we uh, uh, did our Rust transaction and, and spent a great time at Dell. We saw storage as the most consumable piece of the data center. Because when you have more data, you need more storage, period. There is no other uh, discussion about it. When you have more data, it doesn't mean necessarily you need more servers or networking subsystems, but you need always more drives and more space to store data. And what we saw is, as I said earlier, an ecosystem, a market where Arab Spring didn't arrive, bunch of dictatorships are running the world, and people and customers don't have a voice. And we saw open source meeting this ecosystem as a huge opportunity. How can we make that happen? So Nextender was that company, an open source file system bringing that software defined everything opportunity all in one. Uh, in a very low cost, but also a, a customizable and flexible way for different workloads. That was our vision. But more importantly, and this is not a cliche, more importantly, what we saw is customers, the enterprises we met around the world, including India. By the way, for those uh, who don't know, Nextcenter is very big in India with uh, big customers and partners. 
But we saw customers were treated not nicely by these hardware vendors. For the past three decades, they did not have a voice. They just were pushed, signed POs, and delivered boxes. Innovation and customization and open source collaboration was to a minimum. Now with OpenStack, with CloudStack, and all this other software-defined innovation, we believe open source is the future. And that is where the biggest differentiation can come from India as an opportunity. So what we saw as a company and as investors and as employees, we can make this happen. We can change this industry. This will not only change the industry, how we approach the business as a whole and a business model. Typically, to give you some numbers, last year, there were $9 billion new storage sold, $9 billion worth of new storage sold in, in terms of hardware for nine exabytes in size, new storage. Can you do the math per terabyte? How much is that? $9 billion for nine exabytes, $1,000 per terabyte. If you go to the Apple store next door, you can get a Western digital drive for two terabytes for $53.99. Isn't that a, a, a mafia network for you? You're paying $950 above for that mafia fee. Disruption. Perfect opportunity for companies like us and many companies in the room who are seeing software as the differentiator to innovate. So that was our segment, what we saw is Customers are being abused all day long. There's an open source collaboration with all the software-defined data centers, software-defined everything, innovation around social, mobile, Internet of Things. And because of those trends, a lot of data, now data is exploding even further than what we saw in the last three decades. Now we see this is the opportunity. Make sure everything is so low cost, that's ubiquitous. And not focus on profit but on volume, give love to the customer, and in return, you get love back. That's why even our tagline is all about freedom, all about software, and all about love. And we mean this not in a cute, funny way. We truly believe we have a passion to change the industry. Because of that passion, we have the repetition. We do what we do all the time, consistently, everywhere from marketing to sales to development. To, to innovation with our customers, treating the customer like a partner, pa a, a treating the partner like a customer, and at the end of the day, treating our employees as the differentiators and the gurus in the business to help the customer to achieve their goals. And with that, we get more bites every day. As a startup company, after three years, we have one exabyte under management. For a small company, that's a big capacity and we have only 200 people. We have 200 people around the world, also big coverage here in India with our customers and also with our development and partners. We are focusing on growing our business. When MR said to me, how do we start a billion dollar company? My thinking was, why not a hundred billion dollar company? Why not a trillion dollar company? Think about this for a second. IT industry today, globally, 3.7 trillion dollars size. 3.7 T, with Tarkan T, trillion. Out of that 3.7 trillion dollars, 2.5 trillion dollars is all services, all technology services. Who leads in the world in services? What country? You own the freaking market. No, not joke. 2.5 trillion out of 3.7, 3.7 T, is all service. Uh, uh, services in terms of technology, also for telcos. It's not only IT services, but telecommunication services is part of that. The rest, 1.2 trillion is divided, 600 and 600 billion, into hardware and software. The good news for software vendors, software piece is the fastest growing segment. Grows about 4 to 5% year over year. Think about it, $600 billion market software growing 4 to 6% year over year. Software-defined everything market, software-defined infrastructure market within that segment is only $20 billion today, but growing 100% year over year. And that is where your opportunity, your differentiation to create next $100 billion company, and why not? 
the next $1 trillion value ecosystem business. Ecosystem within a segment, vertical, geographic, or whatever technology you have in mind. As we were talking with MR and the sponsors about these presentations, I know you have a lot of speakers come to here and tell their own story. And I think context is important. And I know a lot of people come ask me, hey, how have you guys done this, X, Y, Z? And I see a lot of millennials, you know, those 20-somethings come in and tell me that they're new companies, they're the next Facebook, they're the next Amazon, they're next this and that. Going back to MR's positioning earlier, the next billion dollar company. If you wanna be the next billion dollar company or next hundred billion dollar company, let's find out how we can become our own Steve Jobs or Mark Zuckerberg or Azim Premji. Not try to emulate someone else. Become better than that. Who cares about Steve Jobs or Mark Zuckerberg or Azim Premji? Look at them, learn the best, but multiply it. You have the power to be become better. That's the way we look at it at our company. We have 200 people in our company, 200 employees who own 50% of my company. Our executive team does not take salary. We are all investors. 24-7, we live our business. In the last three weeks, I slept probably two hours a night. Average, traveling from city to city, meeting customers and partners because I'm an investor in the business. This is my company. The people who work with me, my team, our team, we are all owners in it. We don't wanna be the next Steve Jobs or next Mark Zuckerberg or Jeff Bezos. You're gonna be better, who cares? We're gonna do what they've done, learn from it, but don't make the mistakes they've done and double it, triple it. And it's not about just the dollar amount, but the creation of wealth we create not only for ourselves, for the customer. I had a meeting just before I came over here in Korea. Anybody from Korea here? Anybody from Seoul, Korea? Great. So I'm in this meeting. Have you done business in Korea? Anybody done Korea business in Korea? India is heaven in business when you compare with Korea. Let me tell you why. Do you know what I mean? Have you been in Korea before? You look like you've been, you, you look like all tired, you're done. <laughs> because in Korea, when you're negotiating, they wear you down. They're the best negotiators in the world. And I'm saying this with a loving and, and most uh, caring way. They are the best people in business negotiation. They negotiate every single little thing. Even when you're having lunch about kimchi, that little pickle you're eating, they negotiate that kimchi with you. And as you're eating that, next day there's a plan to get more uh, price reduction from you as you're eating that kimchi. And again, I'm saying this in the most loving and caring way. I know this is been recorded and it's gonna be shared with the Korean Prime Minister. I'm screwed in Korea. The reason I'm sharing this, our biggest customer uh, 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 is not in Korea, but second biggest uh, uh, customer is in Korea. And They've done such a big deal with us, they became an investor to my company. It's a customer, uses the technology of Nexenta software defined storage. They cut their cost 90, 95%, and they became an investor. And in a Korean style, they negotiate every day. Investor, they're the owners negotiating with themselves. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So as we're negotiating, going through the uh, deal uh, uh, this, uh, yesterday before I came down, and I realized, I realized how amazing it is to start a business and build these type of customer relationships and build value together, even you're negotiating for that each piece of kimchi you're eating at dinner and the next day in the meeting. And what I realized was, as we're talking to this group of folks at this big company, the name of the company doesn't matter, very successful company in Korea, I realized it's not about just dollar amounts. It's creating wealth and value for all of us around the table. Because at the end of the day, no matter how difficult that negotiation is, for every single bite and cent, since we're a software company, we have a lot of leeway to negotiate because we built once, you sell multiple times. My view is, who cares? Let's give them what they want and grow it even 100%, 200%, 300%. As we give the goodwill, we'll get the goodwill. And I'll tell you, today, this, mo this morning, as I uh, woke up, and we're already having a big cloud service with this company, we're getting and signed up new customers through them, and I realize in our businesses, it's not just emulating what someone else done, but finding that core in you, in your companies, and differentiation, 
not only in terms of marketing, but in terms of customer relationships, partner relationships, product positioning, and in a disruptive way, in a disruptive way, not emulating someone else, but creating your own value and your own brand equity. For you as the CEO, as the founder, as the employee, as the company, as the ecosystem that you deal with, and in the context you deal with. Obviously, every single region is a little bit different. Every single time zone is a little bit different. Even in India, doing business in the north versus south, east versus west is different. So that contextuality is going to be even a bigger deal. That's why as I was listening to Minerva earlier, that doing that classes in different cities, it's a big friggin' deal. And I meet a lot of customers and partners, and I realize some of these folks never been in another country. Forget about in another uh, uh, planet. I'm not talking about in another country sometimes, in another city in their own country. It is impossible to win business and build loving relationships with your customers and partners unless you have that understanding and that context. So I know a little bit, a little bit time left here, but I'm going to share one, one other thing uh, uh, that uh, MR mentioned earlier. The differentiation. The differentiation to us, to me personally, as an investor in my company and to my people and to our team, is in three ways. Customer differentiation in each geography, in each vertical, and in each customer type, from large to mid-sized to small businesses. Partner differentiation from channels to our OEMs. Understand the needs in each country. China OEMs and resellers are completely different than I, how, how I do business in Noida in Delhi. Are we doing the same thing as we're doing in Brazil or North America? It's completely different. I strongly urge Indian entrepreneurs and investors to spend more time outside of India. And as in G and Vipro, Infosys, Cognizant, some of these big companies show that. But now the time for the software companies to uh, follow that and even do it in a better way. Open up. Open up the other worlds, other countries, and Indians do that very well. You're in every country in some shape or form. So understanding that context is going to be a big differentiator. And next piece for me, based on the success we had in the past, very important, product differentiation. I know it sounds like a cliche, but when I see a hype word, everybody follows the same word. How many times you heard in this event, in the last two days, software defined? How many times? I hope, I'm, I'm sure, many, many times. Social media, social commerce. Everybody I meet, they tell me they're a social media company. I'm not kidding. Since breakfast with MR, 10 people came up to me with their cards, and I asked, what do you guys do? I'm a social media company. That's not differentiation. We need to, as India entrepreneurs, as software companies, have a narrative which is differentiated than anybody else's. Don't follow freaking Mark Zuckerberg. Be your own Mark Zuckerberg. Be better. Be better than Facebook. Be better than uh, Twitter. Be better than those companies. And you have the potential. How many people do we have in India? A lot, that someone says. <laughs> and a super education. You talked about IITs. We have a huge opportunity in software, also in hardware and services, but your differentiation in product and how you tell the story is going to be critically important. And I keep saying that every time I come over here. And I'll tell you again, whether that's social media, Internet of Things, big data, contextual intelligence, cloud infrastructures, or software-defined everything, or open source, pick the piece Pick the theme which nobody else does. If everybody is doing the same thing, tell it differently. And that's the secret of success, in my opinion, to create the next billion dollar, but more importantly, next hundred billion dollar, next trillion dollar opportunity for India and for our uh, ecosystem and industry. On that note, uh, let me bring um, MR here. We have only two minutes left for a good conversation. Thank you. Man. Thank you. Okay, question for you, man. Uh, this last part of your tagline, all love. Can you expand on that? Because I don't think you quite got that message across. Okay, so, so. <laughs> uh, so bottom line, as I uh, shared earlier, we truly believe if the customer is not su successful with what they do, they will not come back, right? It's cliche, right? It's, you know, it's, it's a fact. But truly show that to the customer. That's why I was giving this Korea example. Uh, some of the things that you've been asked for was nobody would do it. I'm still doing it because I believe on the opportunity and I believe one plus one will equal three. We give love to get love back. And in addition to that, we believe if you love what you do, you do it all the time because it's not like a job, right? 
You repeat it all the time. And I think with repetition, success comes. That's what we talk about when we say love. Fantastic. Yeah. Questions? I know it was boring. <laughs> no, no, there's questions. Come on, guys. Who's up first? Where's the mic? OK, go ahead. Can you introduce yourself and what you do? Okay, GE. Yeah, and, uh, I know, small company. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's the other way. <laughs> you are very, this was a very good presentation from you. And my question to you is, this is a change in storage. And the fact what you have explained, that's correct. We pay a good amount of money on the storage, which we are not supposed to. And we are doing that one, and a lot of people are doing. What is the take? When you introduce this thing, how NetApp and Hitachi and HP is taking? So look, EMC, HP, NetApp, uh, um, all these storage hardware companies, I think they have like, some reward to get me killed and my team. Um, <laughs> we're hearing that all the time. Look, I think as companies, we should not be bitter. We should be better. Competition makes you, makes, you know, should make you better, not just upset and bitter, right? I versus E. We make them better. I'll tell you, there is a joke. Um, I was meeting this CIO actually back in, uh, uh, in Shanghai, big uh, cloud company. And the guy goes, we have a Nexenta mug in my desk. I get a 20% immediate discount from my hardware vendor. We have a Nexenta flag in the data center, we get another 20%. We, they didn't buy the product yet. They just got the mug and the flag. <laughs> and I said, you know what? That's love. That's enough for me. I don't need to make a profit on you. Use me to get better, uh, 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 better discounts from your hardware vendors, EMCs, NetApps, and so forth. We make the industry better. More competition means now everybody wants to do software-defined storage. I'll tell you one thing. In the past, when I say software-defined storage, people would laugh. Now, every hardware company has a software-defined storage story. Everybody is following the same messaging. So it's great for us. We differentiate it, now everybody follows. That was the example I was giving to the Indian entrepreneurs. Don't be another social media company. Don't be Facebook. Go and kill them. Just create your new way of doing business. So from a storage perspective, by the way, you guys spend almost $50 million a year on storage as GE. Because exactly. you have so much data, right? Yes. You made investment in Internet of Things with Pivotal. You guys yeah. do a lot of work. Your appliances are becoming all Internet of Things connected devices. Storage is going to be a big deal, not because only for storing data, for managing knowledge. Yep. And on that note, we believe open source collaboration with this, open source file systems with software-defined storage, software-defined data center approach is the future. That's the infrastructure to enable all that social media, social commerce, mobility applications. So we need to get those things together in a big way. So thank you for the question. And last question. When you are going to the Fairfield, the headquarter of General Electric? When are you well, going to in my, uh, I guess we're going to go there in about 30 minutes. I'm, re I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Let's go. That's Power of now. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, microphone there. Microphone please. right there. Uh, if you tell me that you're from Korea, I'm going to leave. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm from Japan. And uh, actually, I love actually, actually I didn't from, thank you. And uh, I'm from Hitachi. Oh my God, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, and uh, actually, yeah, let me share my perspective. That sure. is, I'm here uh, to learn about uh, what's going on in yeah. India. And I love it. And uh, I, I love your story also. And yeah. I, I appreciate what you are doing. I mean, Hitachi is working for the society. Sure. I mean, uh, it's not for just setting a box of storage. Of course. Then, you know, by learning about your strategy or passion or love or those kind of things, you know, I can work with you, actually. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's my perspective, yeah. <laughs> wow. Are you going to go say, Mas? That's what I'm talking about, love. I did not think we could top yesterday afternoon, Ravi. I mean, this is like, we have found love. Well, let's have Oprah here next, too, man. I mean, let's go. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you, Tarkan. Maybe we have one, one last question? One last question. OK, go for it. growing, right? Like the Microphone for you? Yeah. Yep. Could you introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Vijay. I have a startup by name Salute Soft. And we are working for an app on social media. What is media. the company name? Salute Soft. Saloon Soft. Salute, not Salute Soft. Yeah. One, one advice. Say the company with company. Salute Soft. Done. Yeah. Everybody heard Salute Soft? <laughs> SaluteSoft.com. Right? SaluteSoft.com. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah.
confident. So I love like, it. Uh, the storage is growing in four folds, right? Like apps like WhatsApp, Facebook, the storage area is growing. So where do you see this market? Like storage, where it is expanding, like what would be the market size of it? So I'll tell you, very quick. I know uh, this presentation's next speaker is gonna kill me as well. Um, so at the end of the day, storage is based on the numbers that we're seeing from IDC. Yeah, every day yeah. there are so many pictures, videos. Absolutely. Uploaded, like Almost 60-70% of the cost mm -hmm. in data center for CIOs mm -hmm. is storage related. Mm -hmm. Because every time, as I said, when you have more workloads, mm -hmm. you might need more servers and more networking equipment. But even if you don't have new workloads, when you have more data, you will need always storage. That's why 70 to 75% of all cost connected drives and flash mm -hmm. and all the equipment with the servers and the storage management, which we believe unified storage management software for block, file, object, and the analytics, streaming analytics. I'm telling you, my friends, you guys know that in India better than anybody else. Streaming analytics, contextual intelligence for data and data management is the next big holy grail. Nobody does that 100%. That's our number one focus as a company. I'm looking for developers, partners to work together and to change the industry. That's gonna be a big deal in the next, next 50 years. Contextual intelligence into the data, but from a storage and data management perspective. Big opportunity for you all in India. Yeah, how do you see that the startups like us can collaborate with the next year? Come to Huddle. We're going to Huddle, huddle yeah, first floor. Huddle session. Let's have a conversation. Yeah, from first word, I have decided to come to your Huddle. I'm gonna give, do I need to give you a hug as well? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, the last Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it.